Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and yesterday I did a video discussing kind of why I'm doing the floor press again, and I talked a little bit about being all around strong. Uh, so today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the six basic exercise types that you need in order to be all around strong and have well-rounded strength with no weaknesses. So let me put on my plus five out of weapons miller. Work on skill, not my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Uh, because what we need to understand with this, when I say that a person, if they have trained all the basic functions to some extent regarding their training and planes of motion and stuff, that there shouldn't be any exercise out there in existence, any real exercise or movement uh, that you shouldn't be able to produce respectable strength on. And the reason for that is because you don't really have any muscular weaknesses. You're going to know a basic movement pattern, and you're going to have a well-rounded musculature in terms of your overall strength balance. So therefore, you should be respectably strong at any of those. Uh, and what those are, are going to be six basic things. They're going to be some sort of pull from the floor, right? Uh, and I don't necessarily mean just a pen lay row because that falls under a different type of uh, pulling for the upper body. Some sort of complete pull from the floor, some sort of squat, some sort of vertical press, some sort of horizontal press, a vertical pull, and a horizontal pull. Six things. So essentially, if a person only did six exercises, they would be well balanced overall. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to be the most aesthetic balance always. There's no guarantee of that because different people's structures are different. Uh, different people have different size rib cages, arm bones, leg bones, hips, everything else. So you have different proportions, different bone thicknesses. That's going to affect those things even if people trained identically. But if you want to at least have a decent overall uh, development and decent overall strength and be able to just be strong at random different things, that's what you need. So what do I mean by those things? What are we defining as those? All right, when I say some sort of pull from the floor, uh, that basically comes down to two things, some sort of clean or some sort of deadlift, all right? Uh, they're relatively interchangeable on this. And what I mean there is that a person could pick one or the other and they'll develop that basic strength function. Um, think about it with deadlifts. Deadlifts build almost every muscle in your body, everything from your hamstrings, your quads, your calves, your glutes, spinal erectors, whole core, traps, lats, forearms, right? Uh, isn't the same thing true of a clean? Pretty similar. I mean, different exercise, but the idea is the same. You are taking a weight, either pulling a really heavy weight off the floor, or you are exploding a slightly lighter weight all the way off the floor and up to your um, shoulders, right? Uh, so when I say that someone should train one of those to have this, do I am I specifying? No, I don't care. Conventional deadlift, deficit deadlift, sumo deadlift. I hate sumo deadlifts, by the way. I hate sumo deadlifts. But they would still work for this. Uh, again, as long as you're pulling from the floor full range of motion, though, you can get the same effect. Trap bar deadlift. How about cleans? How about a power clean? How about a muscle clean? Yeah, to some extent, yeah. Muscle clean might not be as good, but you're still going to get strong from exploding a weight off the floor. All right, that's one basic pattern covered. What about squatting? I don't care what sort of squat you do. It is a basic function. It is keeping your torso upright with a weight stabilized on it and using your legs to press it up. Okay. Now, people say, what about a leg press? No, a leg press doesn't train your body to lift weight. Uh, it's not going to have the same athleticism. It's not going to make you as overall strong. And that's what we're talking about. What do you need for a well-balanced strength, well-balanced muscular development? Leg press can't substitute that because your upper body isn't involved at all. Your core isn't involved at all. That, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about using your legs while developing all those things simultaneously. Uh, do we care what sort of squat? No. Olympic squat, low bar squat, front squat, doesn't matter. Uh, front squat would be the lightest of the three, but arguably uh, has its own set of athletic transfer. Why? Because you have to rack it in your hands. So again, I'm not talking about a crossed arm front squat or a squat with a harness on, but if, uh, if you're doing a front squat where you hold it, yeah, it would definitely give you overall strength. Even though it would be the lightest of the three, it still works because it has other components added to it. You'd still be good at squatting. All three of those do the same thing. Keep your torso upright to some extent with a weight supported on top of your body 
that you have to keep upright while you squat it up from the floor. Okay, That's one basic function. That carries over to an enormous number of other lifts. It carries over to an enormous number of sports. All right, pressing, uh, horizontal pressing and vertical pressing. In other words, pressing this way or pressing over your head. You need both. Those are basic functions. If you pick and get strong and get well developed with enough volume and workload so that you get stronger, develop the muscles involved, that's going to handle uh, an enormous amount of your upper body development. But they're not the same in regards to what you get from each one. They're different planes of motion. Obviously, you get more chest development from a press like this. You get more, a little more shoulder development from an overhead press. And when I want to talk about an overhead press, really, if you want to be strong, it needs to be some sort of standing overhead press. And we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so what do I mean by the other presses? I don't care. Bench press, decline bench, weighted dips. Doesn't matter. Idea is the same. They all have uh, similar movement patterns. They will all carry over to each other. They will all give you strength through that general plane of motion and develop the muscles associated with it. Same with overhead pressing. And you, again, you need to be standing because, again, this is about developing strength through your entire body. Uh, again, this is picking six basic exercises. If you do all of these functions, you are going to be all around strong. And that's what I'm talking about, that if any random exercise is thrown at you, someone just wants to challenge you to whatever lift or awkward lift or a lift you've never done before, you should actually be decently respectable at it if you've built one of these. Even on the other one with the chest, even a floor press. Floor press is great. Floor press is great. It trains you to be very, very explosive. Probably the most explosive out of any of the chest presses, you're going to have to use a lighter weight. So we kind of get into some other examples of that. Uh, but uh, the overhead pressing, any sort of standing press, will give you this strength function. That's pressing while standing on your feet, driving through your heels, pressing a weight over your head. It could be a strict press to the front. It could be a push press to the front. It could be a behind the neck press, a strict one. Behind the, uh, the neck push press. You could use dumbbells. They could be strict. They could be push presses. You could do one dumbbell at a time. It doesn't matter. The idea, again, is the same. If you train this basic function, your chest, your shoulders, your triceps are all going to be strong. Um, and again, the standing ones are going to train you to do, drive it through your core, through your heels, everything else. That's going to give you a lot of strength through a lot of different situations. That's going to develop at least half of your upper body completely, as long as you get strong at all of those. Now, as far as the other pulling stuff goes, vertical pull and a horizontal pull, they're not the same. They do work muscles slightly differently, and they train you through a different pull, a different plane of motion. Uh, again, if you have to have some specificity of training if you want to be all around strong. You need to train these different functions. Uh, so as far as a rowing goes, a pulling towards your chest while bent over, I don't care what sort of row. Strict barbell row, a pan lay row, a uh, T-bar row, it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying it doesn't matter which of these you pick, but if you just want to be all around strong, if you pick any one of those, it is going to train that basic function. They're going to give similar types of development. They're going to build your lats, they're going to build your biceps, brachialis, forearms, they're going to build your grip strength. They will work your lower back. All right. They will work even your glutes and things to some extent. Your whole thoracic lumbar sling will still be worked by this. Not maybe as much as a deadlift, but it will still give it secondary work. Uh, it'll develop all that area and train you to pull through that uh, particular plane, combined with some sort of uh, vertical pull, which is going to be a chin up, a pull up. Now, some people say, well, lat pull down. Uh, yeah, if you're not strong enough to do chin ups and pull ups. But any person who's strong enough to do at least five chin ups or pull ups uh, should probably disregard the lat pull down because you get a lot more core development, you get a lot of other secondary things that come with the hanging and pulling your body through space that you don't get with a lat pull down. But when you think about it from a strength perspective, if a person has trained any one of these exercises through these six functions and you do at least six basic exercises with some degree of regularity to where you've built the muscles involved with it, uh, you've trained all these planes of motion to be reasonably strong at them, you are going to be all around strong. You're gonna be all around strong as long as you pick one exercise out of each of those six and you get strong at it, you're going to have a well-developed musculature. You're probably not going to have too many major weaknesses. 
you're not going to have probably even any aesthetic major weaknesses. You'll have minor weaknesses that could be corrected, might even need some isolation work or whatever. Uh, you know what, I'm not going to tell people who are going to chase a certain aesthetic look that you're not going to need some isolation work. You probably will because something is eventually going to be imbalanced. But if you get strong at all six of these things, you aren't going to have any that are overly difficult for you to correct because everything, every muscle in your body is going to get a reasonable amount of stimulation and development if you build basic strength and workload through all six of these basic movements. All right, you're not going to have major weaknesses that are going to be extremely difficult for you to correct to the point to where you're going to need side enhancement oils and everything else, uh, you know, to at least have a look that you want that at least looks respectably balanced. As far as your strength goes, you're not going to have any major strength weaknesses. Those are going to be every function that's going to carry over to most sports you're going to do. Those same things are going to carry over to other lifts. So if you've gotten strong at any one of those and you're goofing off with friends or whatever and they're doing a certain exercise or you have something where you need to demonstrate some sort of strength, you're going to be able to transition to it. Uh, and I'll go so far as to say that anyone who's gotten strong at all those things could switch sports very, very quickly as far as different strength sports and stuff go. Uh, meaning someone who trained all of those who's never done powerlifting would find that they would develop a decent enough strength base that at any time, if they wanted, they could probably start peaking for 12 weeks out from a powerlifting meet and actually do respectably well at it, even if they don't do the conventional three. Meaning if you only did the four plus or the weighted dip, it would carry over to the bench press enough that with 12 weeks of specificity of training, your bench would actually be pretty good if you never benched. Uh, if you only did power cleans and squats, the power clean would carry over enough, particularly if you've been rowing also, it would carry over enough that if you were to pick up deadlifting, you would actually get strong at it very, very quickly because you've already built a basic similar movement pattern and you've built all the muscles involved. Same thing with the squat. If a person's been doing nothing but front squats, they could switch to the back squat and very quickly develop a respectable enough back squat that they could go compete in powerlifting. Uh, so that's kind of the idea and that's stuff that uh, people like Jamie Lewis did. He didn't do powerlifting. He went over and just decided powerlifting was a joke. He had developed an enormous strength base through a bunch of awkward and various different lifts. Lots of different lifts. Um, training very, very heavy. Didn't even always do the conventional versions. Walked into powerlifting and crushed it. Within a year he was a world record holder. So uh, it's, it's easy for people to transition, and that's kind of the point. I'm not saying this needs to be for powerlifting, but it can be for any general strength sport. Uh, you could pick up any strength-based sport if you have trained any one of these functions. Uh, if you've trained one exercise very effectively out of each of those six categories, you're not going to have any strength weaklings that are going to be a major problem for you. You're going to have a respectable strength base that will allow you to transition to any sort of sport or physical activity that requires a strength component because you've already will have probably trained that function. Uh, you're going to be all around strong. And also even guys who are saying, well, I want to get bigger and have a certain look. Well, you're going to have developed every muscle in your body to some extent, maybe not maximally, but at least to a reasonable level that if you wanted to go chase a certain type of look later, it wouldn't be that hard to adapt over to it because you aren't going to have too many major weaknesses in regards to some muscle in your body being underdeveloped. Uh, so again, when we talk about being all around strong, that's what I mean. It would be a good idea for everyone out there uh, to at least develop a basic proficiency and a basic strength level in each of those six functions. And I'm not saying you have to do very specific lifts for it. You just need decently full range of motion exercises uh, of any version of any of those. Like I said, it doesn't have to be the bench press. It could be the dip. It could be the floor press. It'll be interchangeable in terms of that overall strength and movement pattern. And that's kind of the idea. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.